What's up everybody, it's Caveman with Functional Fitness VA and today we're doing a windmill. What is a windmill? Well, it's a diagonal hip hinge with sometimes a weight overhead or underneath or underneath or both, right? So here's the more common version, right? Weight fixed overhead, lockout position. I rotate through my thoracic spine, aka rib cage, then I hinge on the diagonal plane to my hips. That's simple, right? Well, it's a mobility exercise with the lower body, so we got to loosen some stuff up first, some gas pedals, some windshield wipers, get my hamstring stretched a little bit, some thoracic rotation, whatever you feel like doing that works well for you. It's a good idea to loosen up a little bit before this, at least the first couple times you do it. You can later use it to loosen up, but I like to loosen up before I start. So here I am. I fix the weight overhead. I look at it because it's a giant ball of death above my head that I don't want to fall on me or rip my shoulder in half, more or less. And then I hinge on the diagonal plane, 45 degree turn with my feet as I keep my spine stiff. It's rotated, but it's long. I never round my back or hyperextend. Push back and slightly outside in your hip and get as far down as you can get without compromising. If that means you can touch the ground, fantastic. If it means you can't, then don't. Don't force it. Don't round your back or get a deep knee bend to try and get down there. We can talk more about a soft knee later. So to start it off, we've loosened up. Now we're going to work that hip hinge, right? Everyone's done that a million times with a kettlebell deadlift or a swing. Now I'm on the diagonal plane for it. How do we get there? I want to work a semi-soft or soft knee hip hinge. Not a deep one like you would do for a regular old silverback deadlift or a swing, but more like a Romanian deadlift where your knees bend a little bit. They bend enough for you to push your hips back. But that's about it. That's what you want to work before you start this uh, windmill here. So... Feet are on railroad tracks. My heels stay put. I turn my toes or forefoot to the side 45 degrees. I do a little sassy hip thing here. I bend my front knee and kind of put the weight to the side slightly and on the back hip, right? Because that's what we want to focus on moving. I'm still facing my feet as I hinge. I'm pushing into my hips here, so I'm telling them to go back. Spine is long. How do I know if I'm doing it right or in the right path? If I could pick up my toes and or my heel back and forth, probably not going to pick the whole thing up. You'll fall on your face. won't be fun of my front foot. This is the non-working foot, right? If my weight shifts back and forth, I have too much weight on that foot. There's going to be a little bit, but enough or only enough so that you can pick up your toes or heel without your weight shifting forward or back. My weight's back into my back leg and hip, right? Shift back, squeeze my glutes, stand up tall. The old hinge and plank thing from a million swings and deadlifts, etc., etc. My hands behind my back here help me kind of have confidence. I'm not going to fall on my face. If you need it, you can soften that back knee. That's if you are you can't get it, you can't get the hip to track back and forward. But notice, my front foot could still pick up the toes or the heel without my weight shifting. Right? So regardless of what you're doing with your back leg, soft or completely straight, that's where you put your weight as you hinge. Now I bring my hands in front. Long spine still facing where my feet are facing. Hinge back and forth or up and down. Try and find and feel that movement. Again, back into the side with the hip hinge. Now. I hinge down here, well, in a second I will, and then I'm gonna open up my, my hands or my arms, my chest. Instead of opening to the side, I'd prefer a backstroke here. So it does this semicircle up and around. I'm watching my fingers as they take that semicircle path. And when I get there, it opens my chest. There's a slight turn of the hips, slight, but not too much. Because if they turn a bunch, then you're gonna get some weird torque in the knees and that's not equipped to handle much weight, et cetera, et cetera. So, my hip's still going back into the left. I still got the majority of weight in my back foot, the working foot. But I'm open now with my arms. I'm looking up at the top hand because eventually that's where weight may be or may not. Don't have to force it. I hinge and plank, right? So we're keeping it simple with the movement. Hinge and plank, although the setup is a little awkward, uh, at least initially. I stay long through my spine. Not heavy on my for forward foot. Hinge, look at that up hand. So I keep my chest open. Stand up, squeeze my glute. Planking to the top, right? Notice I have a straight line from my wrist, elbow, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle of that working side or my back leg side. Hinge and plank. Hinge and plank, right? Broken record, Kayvon. Back at it again, saying the same thing over and over. Just in a different position. You want to work this movement till you feel comfortable with it. If this is all it ever becomes for you, that's fine. It's a great exercise to loosen up and warm up, but we can take the kettlebell, teleport it over, boom. We're going to do a low windmill here. So that would be my next kind of progression of this after getting down the movement without any weight. I'm going to have it on the inside of my instep of my front leg or non-working leg. 
I like going to thumbs up position, supinated if you will, not palm turning down and in to grab it because that's kind of closing off the shoulder and that's not what we want here. It probably won't kill you, but if we're going to work the thing, work it the best way, we'll call it. I hinge as I'm looking at my top hand, right? My hand, my bottom hand that is, finds the kettlebell almost by accident because I'm hinging well and I'm keeping that bottom arm vertical with my fingers pointing down to the ground. I find the kettlebell handle, I grip it, grip the heck out of it, right, with a long arm so it helps me pack my lat, brace my abs, push my feet through the floor, plank my way to the top, and there's a low windmill. Again, I'm still in that 45 degree turn with my feet, still loading the back hip or the back leg, the working leg, looking at my top hand, keeping chest open. And if you do this and imagine you have a bell in that top hand, good, because if that's where you want to get to, it's good to always visualize that. Now, my weight's not shifting forward and back. Again, I get a little more weight in the front foot because I've added 35 pounds here to me, but I'm hinging back. I'm not doing a weird uh, lunge-ish thing. Right? With a wide stance, sometimes you'll see people do that. And if you do it and it feels good, fine. But the danger is it turns into an awkward, bendy, foldy lunge, which lunges are awesome. we got a few videos on those. It's just we don't want to lunge here. It's a windmill, right? So we're hinging through the hips on that diagonal plane, if I've said that a time or 18. So brace your abs, right? Because the low windmill, you're still working, even though you're not working the top arm and the shoulder stability there. You're working your core, your midsection, your trunk, right? And this anti-rotation, anti-side side flexion, lateral flexion, whatever you want to call it, as you hinge and plank through the hip. So your lower body's getting the movement, upper body's stabilizing regardless where the weight is it's just this one doesn't get that top shoulder we're going to fix that in a second right so here we go we've worked the hinge through that i'm just going to turn here because well i want to work the other side but i clean it and for me i like cleaning it and pressing it then turning my feet if you want to clean it then turn your feet then press it up to you whatever feels best you feel the safest with but either way you could even snatch it at the top which i think i do later uh we'll press it up here I got my feet turned away from the bell. So if it's the high windmill, your feet turn away from the bell. If there's low windmill, your feet turn towards the bell. I still have my bottom hand in the position as if I was going to grab that kettlebell. Top hand or top arm is vertical and straight. I'm looking at the weight, right? Keeping my shoulder packed. Open through the chest. Rotate through the rib cage, whatever you want to think there. Hinge on that diagonal plane. No surprise there. Push the floor away. Plank at the top. All right? Same movement with my body and same position, more or less, just I have a weight above my head. Speaking of weight above your head, it's kind of something you want to make sure you're confident with and you have control over. Here's a fun little drill. Take a yoga block or if you have a shoe that's not a stiletto or not a boot, something soft or light. Make a fist with the top hand. I'm opening my thumb here to get a little extra cheat and help and treat that like a kettlebell. Hinge. Feel your weight in the back foot. Spine is long. Open chest. And again, if you find the ground with your bottom hand, great. If you got to bend your back or do something weird, don't. But that's a drill to kind of gain control over that weight overhead and feel confident before you add a weight. Now, we got another drill here. We're going to use a stability ball on the wall. Uh, I like a stability ball here. It's a 65 centimeter one because it's big enough that I have room to push into it. Now, I'm going to put it on the back hip or the working hip. I'm going to hinge on that 45 degree plane and I don't want movement out of the ball in any fashion. I'm going to squish it and compress and push it, push into it, but I'm not going to roll it along the wall and I damn sure don't want to drop it, right? Because that means I'm going towards my front foot and doing that weird lunge thing. So I find a position where I, standing tall, I'm keeping it there, but not squishing it. Get my hands like I'm doing the windmill with a weight, open through the chest, hinge on that diagonal plane, push into that ball. And again, you want to push back and slightly to the outside. Notice it's not right behind me. It's not directly to the side of me. It's like 45 degrees out, which I may have touched on a time or two already with your feet. Feet one way, 45 degrees, the movement with your hips slightly, 45 degrees the other way. I'm pushing into the ball and I don't drop it at any point. At the bottom, really don't want to drop at the bottom, but also at the top because you're not getting, you don't want to waste time here and chase that ball over the place. Again, you don't want to rotate and create a weird spiraling action through your whole body which the ball will roll sideways on the wall because, again, when you're loading, that's just going to feel weird and a weird torque in your knee. So, pushing through the floor, stand up plank, hinge 45 degrees, push into that ball. It's going to teach you where your hips should go. Good drill there. Last drill we have, it's the half kneeling windmill. I'm in the open stance, right? So my 
front leg opens 90 degrees. That means the foot of my front leg and the shin of my back or down leg are perpendicular, right? Grab my kettlebell, cheat clean it up with two hands. It's in the hand of my front leg. I'm looking at the kettlebell. In a second, I will. I hinge through the hips. That means I push my hips towards my back foot or bottom foot. My hand finds the ground by accident. My spine stays long, chest is open. I push through the hips to get tall, squeeze my butt, right? This one's more 90 degrees of a hip hinge, but it still teaches you the same thing. And you still have to worry about holding the bell and all that. You just got your hand getting to the ground for a little stability at the bottom. If you want to get more range of motion, if you've earned it with the mobility, bring your elbow down where your hand was. And that was about a forearm length away from your bottom knee out to the side there. So that's an option to get a little more range of motion, get more time under tension, et cetera, et cetera. Only if you don't have to bend your spine to get down there and you can keep the bell in place. So those are a couple of drills. If you want to just work it harder, but you don't want to hold a heavier weight overhead, much like the first thing, well, not much like the first thing, it is the first thing I did, we can do the double windmill. I got the bottom kettlebell by the instep of my front foot. Well, in, this, in this case, I snatch it up overhead in the high windmill position. I hinge, hand finds that bottom kettlebell, tighten, push the floor away, plank at the top. Same movement. Notice all these are the same movement, regardless what bells and whistles you attach to it, much like a swing or a silverback deadlift. You want to keep the movement sound even if you add bells, whistles, and double kettlebells, triple kettlebells, 10 kettlebells. All right, so there it is. That's the windmill. It's a good mobility tool. It's a good stability tool. Add it to your workouts. Again, don't force anything, weight or range of motion, but have fun.